Um, I know people. Okay, record it. Um, so it's very few uh, slides here now. I'm not a I'm not a mad fan of PowerPoint as such because it's been done to death for the last twenty years. So um, I've got about ten slides, but we'll be, we'll be flying through them. And then I have a few different cameras set up there just to show you a few bits and um, I have some videos that I've done. Now the only thing with the videos is haven't had time to edit them so they're, they're kind of sideways you're going to have to turn your head that way or, or turn your um if you're on an ipad turn your ipad sideways so um yeah basically i I'd have a big interest in rockets and that kind of stuff um some years ago i did a, a bit of a talk on the russian space shuttle and of late i've been kind of drawn into the whole spacex thing uh the starship in particular um you know watching nasa space like there on youtube and that kind of stuff um, and then one of my favorite actors, of course, Tom Cruise. So he's allegedly going up next year to do another Mission Impossible, or as he said himself lately, he, he might actually do an alternative film up there. So um, the main thing is Elon Musk has pretty much guaranteed him and a director uh, or film guy um, passage up there. I don't know what they're paying, if they are paying anything. Um, so basically, I'm trying to get my own kids kind of interested in astronomy and um, you know, um, really to get them doing kind of hands off, hands on stuff to get them away from their, their iPads and that kind of stuff. So I've been developing a few little experiments that um, they're not all original to me. I've copied a bits and pieces of them from everywhere. So we're going to look at getting Tom up to the International Space Station, getting him docked with it, and um, then getting him home safely. Whether that's a good thing or not, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll do our best for him. Right, so it'll be just two or three slides with some um, kind of stuff there technical stuff um for the, for the anoraks like myself and the rest is really kind of fun stuff um just move this screen over there so falcon 9 most people are familiar with at this stage so um just a few little facts about that there it's had 121 launches already that's it there on the left i'm sure you're all familiar with it uh it's got um lots of different parts this is where your payload is on top uh, or your crew dragon where your crew go um, we've got the second stage rocket up here, um, carbon fiber element here with the grid fins for steering at home or back to the launch pad. Um, this is the main uh, core of the booster itself. And we've got the landing legs on the, uh, the Merlin engines here as well. So how big is it? It's about 70 meters tall. So if you live in a bungalow, that's 18 bungalows or so. Um, 3.7 3 meters wide, kind of a small bedroom. Um, so it's not massively wide for a rocket. A lot of rockets can be a lot wider than that, but it um, actually helps its aerodynamics uh, on its way up. Uh, it can carry a maximum of 22 tons payload. So um, you can put whatever you want up there, up to 22 tons, crew, um, Tesla cars, remember that Starman car that he sent up. Um, its speed, this is always a debatable one because um, it's, it's speed is obviously, you know, the same as anything up in space, 17,600 miles per hour to stay in uh, low Earth orbit. Um, but of course, the first stage couldn't go that fast. That's its kind of its combined uh, speed. It's what's known as a two-stage orbital class rocket. So um, you've seen videos, of course, of the first stage firing up with nine engines. Um, then it separates and they, the one engine that's left inside will take it up into orbit. So it's fueled by liquid oxygen and uh, kerosene, and uh, not quite the stuff now you have out in your heating system. It's it's rocket grade RP1, so it's very refined. Um, the stage one down here to the left has nine Merlin engines, and they have boost back uh, capabilities. So here's your nine engines, and as far as I know, it's the center one it would make sense, which relights for the landing burn, and that's kind of a close up there of a Merlin engine here. And the second stage, slightly different nozzle on it. It's um, a vacuum engine. Um, we could do a whole lecture on all this. It's all separate, but we leave them out for tonight. Um, so it's a Merlin vacuum engine, slightly different nozzle on it to work um, in space. So each Merlin engine has about 40 tons of thrust, uh, which is very powerful. And um, they're putting up to 29 or so of these on the uh, Starship, um, some figure like that anyway. So that's um, just a general introduction to um, Mr. Tom Cruise to tell him what he's going to be uh, going to space on. I'm sure he's well up to date with a lot of this, but uh, no harm letting him know. 
So I was trying to get this across to, to my kids. They, they don't mind looking at the launches and all that, you know, but it's become a bit boring to them in a way because every launch seems to be looking the same. So we got into um, water powered rockets there not so long ago. Um, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here, really. Um, my first rockets we launched were um, the one Shawnee showed us with the vinegar and the baking soda. And I've done that to death in various locations. So um, thanks to Shawnee for showing me that. Um, the water rockets really kind of just learned off um, YouTube and, and, and internet sites. Um, we've had a few iterations of the water rockets. Um, some of them haven't gone so well. Um, the prototype I'll show you in a few minutes went okay. Um, the one we're on at the moment here at home, um, it's, a more, it's more my son gets into these with me than the daughter, but um, this one is actually flying very well. And we have some video of that there coming up as well. So hopefully, um, if you get a chance in the next few weeks, you might even give one of these um, a go at making. That's really what I'd like people to have a go at. Because you can look at them all day, but to see one in reality, um, you know, and I, and I, like yourselves, have been in space a long time. When I saw this thing launching first, I was absolutely amazed. I couldn't believe water could do, could do what I did. So you just need a few basic things, plastic water bottle. Um, we found that the, um, the belly gown one was probably the best. It's, for some reason, it seems to give out a lot of trust. Um, a pump and a friend, I'll show you those in a second. Um, a friend is basically your, your basketball pump valve or for football. Card or foam board. Um, we found foam board to be the best. Uh, the card, you get about two launches out of it, and um, the card board uh, basically falls apart with the water. The foam board, um, you can get five to ten launches out of that. Seems to work very well. Um, hot glue gun has been fantastic uh, help. Um, we were sellotaping stuff together, but um, hot glue is much more stable. The nose cone, I'll show you the making of that in a second again. Um, the one thing I'll say about the nose cone as it's been optional, um, the rocket, you see the prototype in a second, but no nose cone only reaches maybe eight, nine meters high. And once we put a nose cone on it, the difference was phenomenal, um, almost twice the height. It's obviously more aerodynamic. Now the parachute. So this is kind of where I was hoping to get to before um, my July presentation. <laughs> um, but since we're here early, um, I have the parachute there and have strapped it onto a few other things, but um, couldn't fit it into that nose cone. And um, basically, um, you know, with a real parachute, they vacuum packed them. So um, I'm going to have to come up with a different material. I was using bubble wrap here that we, we squished down. So we're going to be working on getting a different material. Um, we don't really want to use shopping bags. It's a bit, a little bit industrial. We're trying to be a little bit. Um, more adventurous. Now, I'm just going to show you a couple of bits there for a second. I'm just going to share another screen here. Okay, so yeah, you can see on this camera here. Um, can people see that there? Can't hear anyone anyway, so hopefully you can. Yeah, that's you're fine there. All right, thanks, thanks Sean. Yeah. It's like yeah. teaching young lads in school on Zoom last year. You could be talking to the wall for four hours, you know. So <laughs> they're all gone home. <laughs> so, um, so this basically is maybe the fourth or fifth iteration of the rocket. As you can see, this has been heavily used this morning. And um, just a couple of things if you're making these, when you're making the nose cone. Um, it has to, you know, try to have it as light as possible. This is just made from colored paper. Um, so if you're making one nose cone, I suggest you make five to 10 of them because they only last a couple of flights. If they land at all on that nose cone, it's, it's curtains for it. Um, we will try maybe something stiffer for it, but it, it's weight, you know, it's all power to weight, you know, so we want to keep this thing as light as possible. It's the same with the, the fins here. So um, this is a card fin here. Um, this is a prototype for the next one because we want to kind of contour to, to match the bottle for a better fit. As I said, these don't last on the water, um, but they're handy to have to mark out um, fins on the um, on the foam board. Now, I mean, all these materials here, you'll see they're, they're lying around the house. I think foam board is the only thing I had to buy. Everything else you see, I uh, basically found lying around the place. Um, you know, obviously buying a bottle in the shop. Um, so a couple of things here. You've got to make sure that your um, 
your fins here are longer than the kind of pump connection because of the cork going to go in there. So standard uh, wine bottle cork. Uh, most of these are probably a little bit too wide for um, the bottle, so you can just pare them down. You can just see it just pare down the top of that there. Um, I've only gone down about five or six millimeters here, maybe eight millimeters. So I'm going to try it a bit deeper to see if you can get more pressure into the bottle before it um, lid goes off the, uh, the launch pad. Um, so this is a friend here, basketball pump tank. Um, that's been lying around the house for a long time. Um, I don't know how much they are, a couple of euro, get them in any sport shop. And um, they're kind of essential to the whole process. So they're four mil wide and you want to drill a hole there in the center of the cork, less than that, uh, two and a half to three mil. You've got to get an airtight seal with that uh, valve, and that's actually getting looser every time you use it, so might have to do another cork for that. So basically, fill that up with water. Um, there is an ideal level for every bottle. I'll show you one where I filled up uh, just over a third of the way, and you'll see how it doesn't perform that well. Um, so somewhere below a third, let's say, Quarter even of, of the bottle seems to have been ideal for this. So you fill that up and just pop in your pop in your cork. Good tight fit there. And you just put your rocket on the ground, hook up your uh, pump, and uh, let it fly. So we'll show you a couple of those working. Um, parachutes, I'll get into parachutes later on because um, you're only kind of new to those. Just to see how can I unshare that there. Okay, so I have a different thing for you here now. So I said the videos are a little bit sideways. Um, so you might have to one or two of them are okay. Um, this is a prototype here, the little fella. Um, he really gets into it. I suppose kids seven, eight, nine. This is uh, unbelievable for them. And um, this just has the wooden fins and the bottle, and you'll get an idea of the kind of. Um, effect you get, you can see the, the wonder in his kind of eyes and his voice. Okay, so you can see they get quite a bit of a, um, excitement out of that. Um, it went quite high, so we were kind of pleasantly surprised by that. Um, let's move that over there. So... Then he wanted to try it, as young people do, without any water in it. And I wasn't too sure what would happen here, really. So this is no water, just air going in. Oh, sorry, Dermot, we're not seeing any video. At least I'm not on my screen. Oh, OK. Can we one sec there now? Thanks for letting me know on here, because I can't know otherwise. Yeah. Can you see that there now? Just see your desktop with all the videos on it and yourself. Okay, should be showing the uh, the video. Just try it once more there now. Give me one sec. Oh yeah, yeah. I see where I'm going wrong there. Okay. Uh, so you can see that there now. I take it. Yeah, that, that's perfect. Yeah, that's, that's, good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Too many irons in the fire here. We'll just go back to the um to the to the first one here. Okay, so this one here is yeah. This is just with air in it. So he's getting a great kick out of kind of experimenting with air and water. Okay, so that was kind of the general result there. We got the whole time with um, just the with just the air. So I'll show you the um, the water one there now as well. One second there now, folks. So I should be able to share that there now. Okay, so this is with um, water in, in the, um, you can see the water bubbling up there at the bottom. 
Again, this is just a prototype. So we've got quite a bit of height out of that one. Okay, so he's obviously excited about that. So um, just a few different things then we did was to add on um, the, the cone on it, which gave it um, a great bit of a lift. And i um, just show you that one there now. Is that visible there now? No, that's, we can't see that. No. Let's give it one more go here. So. No, we're not. We're only seeing your script, your okay. desktop. I'll get the hang of it now in one second here. Screen <laughs> um, share. Okay, so I think this one is kind of sideways there. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually better, a yeah. pencil one with the cone. So that, that was very high. It nearly killed the dog. <laughs> okay, so um, you can pretty much see there that um, they work quite well and we're going to pretty much keep um, on, on kind of working on them, getting them to work um, a little bit faster there. Okay, can you see my uh, PowerPoint here again? Yes, no problem. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, so um, we'll presume then that Tom Cruise is now up in space and he's on the Crew Dragon here. So for anyone who doesn't know about Crew Dragon, this is the, the capsule that SpaceX put on top of the uh, Falcon 9. And uh, maneuvering it, you've got all these kind of thrusters here on the side. So these kind of two kind of thrusters, Draco thrusters and Super Draco thrusters. Uh, Draco being the kind of older version, and they still use that when they're docking the, um, the cargo um, version of uh, the spacecraft. So they're powered by kind of more dangerous type materials, uh, monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, um, very nasty materials. The Chinese don't mind dropping those on their population as they've seen online. They've got 16, um, 16 little thrusters on each crew dragon. So quite a lot there for control. Uh, the old Dracos used to produce only 20 kilograms of force each, which is um, okay up in space, but for more control with the Crew Dragon, they, they bought that 200 times with the Super Draco thrusters. And in fact, they're so powerful now, they're using those, those on the launch board system as well. Um, if you get a chance to look at a launch board video, you'll see that there. So um, how do they try and get that across? Um, yeah, just to say that they're used for orbit, orbital maneuvering. So to get that across to the kids then, um, I found another kind of uh, experimental thing you can make at home as well, which is actually great fun. Um, so this is a vortex generator. And um, like the Draco thrusters for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. So this kind of is in line with that there. I'll show it to you working now in, in one second. So it's basically a cardboard box and a um, good size cardboard box, about the size of a desktop PC, maybe a little bit bigger. You just need some packaging tape to kind of seal it up. So it has to be well sealed up so you can actually um, kind of create a bit of a vacuum in it, I suppose. Um, at least not have the air escape out to the sides. A uh, bit of paper to decorate it, a circle. Um, we tried a few different size circles on this, uh, ranging from the size of a cup up to a saucer. Um, that's about saucer size there. In fact, the bigger the hole, uh, we got a better uh, vortex coming out of it. Stanley knife to cut the hole there. And then just for a bit of fun, some targets, paper cups, plastic cups, um, I have plastic cups here for the one this evening. But um, I would say styrofoam is probably the best, or probably more um, prone to kind of to, to fall over and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to show you how that works there. Uh, hopefully I won't be as inefficient as I was the last time I do this. Um, so you're back on the desk yeah. there, hopefully. If you can't see it, give me a shout. No, we can see that, that's fine. Um, so again, it's just something I came up with to kind of show the kids uh, what the trusters basically do, opposite and equal reaction. So there's the box there uh, with the space decoration. Um, you can see the size of the hole there, you know, compared to a hand size, it's, it's pretty big. 
and talk to probably a little, little bit less than a saucer. Um, I think this is the thing I used here to actually to mark it out. So the main thing is though, um, before you decorate it, that it's well sealed up because we want all the air coming out here through um, the holes. So basically what's happened there is when you tap on the sides of the box, you're obviously compressing the air inside and it doesn't, it doesn't just puff out through the hole. Okay, that's what people kind of expect. So the air gets forced out and it actually forms a ring vortex around here. Um, there are some videos on YouTube where people put smoke in from smoke machines and you can actually see the ring of uh, smoke actually coming out. If you watch QI and um, Stephen Fry, he has um, a very good video of it actually working. And you can see this beautiful ring of smoke coming out. It gets wider and starts to spin. So we use that just to, to show up as a lethal reaction. So we just got the kids to put a few cups together like this. And um, I won't make this too big now because it can take up way too much time. And um, that's the best tape I found for actually sealing the hook, that packaging tape. And um, cell tape just wasn't strong enough. I'll just put a few more up there. So what we did was build up a few um, pyramids around the kitchen and they basically had shootouts. And they can have a bit of fun in another way as well because if you actually aim at someone it's strong enough to even um, puff their hair up and all that. So we're kind of chasing each other around the house. So basically, I'm just going to take that. Um, I have about four meters I can step back here and aim it at the, at the actual um, stack here. And basically, there's a ring of air actually going to come in and kind of envelop it. And anywhere the air cuts through um, the cups there, it's actually going to knock it off. Okay, so it should only take one or two taps if I can get it right. Going back maybe three meters here now. Okay. You can see it's pretty powerful. I have to pick those up there. Okay, so that's like something really simple you can make at home to try and explain. It's not technically accurate as a truster, but it's the same type of science in terms of action and reaction. Okay, so that's that one there. Um, just while I'm on it there as well on the camera, I will just show um, the cone for the... Um, let's close that there. The cone for the uh, rockets are pretty easy to make. Um, we're also kind of working on another cone at the moment that can hold the parachute and pop off as well. But they're all made in the same way. So it's just a card and a plate, something big like that. Simply draw around it. Okay, so again, it's just another activity, an activity for people to do. And um, so much hands-on stuff in this if you want to have a bit of fun with it. So you can just guess roughly where the middle is and draw a line out. And cut that out very quickly. Right. I'm sure some of you might have done this in school one time in the past. Now, if you're making a large comb, you can simply make um, one cut here across that slit. But the cones for the um, Cones for the plastic bottles are much smaller, so you can actually take out um, a section out of that as well, a quadrant maybe. Okay, and then it's just a matter of folding that up, and you'll actually get a nice cone there for your rocket. You can do that with lots of different materials. Okay, so that's pretty just sell it here together, whatever, and you'll have a nice cone for your rocket there. Just pop that in there now that I see it. Okay, so um, we're going along nicely there. I don't want to go too fast either. If you have any questions, maybe we'll put them at the end. Um, okay, so that's Tom in the space capsule. And um, basically now he's sitting in it and we want to get him docked up to the uh, ISS. So I'm just looking for my other screen here. Do, do. Let's see, can we get you on to... Okay, so I'm just going to um, introduce you to this app here. Some of you might have used it before. 
Um, see there now. Can you see the um, can the docking simulator I have up there now? No. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No. We'll no. get it for you there now. You'll be able to see it now. Yes. Yep. All right. Yeah. There you okay. go. Um, so some of you might have used this, um, if you have, um, it is great fun, it has many applications, so um, simply by googling SpaceX Docking Simulator, you, you'll get to this page here. Now if you have um, the iPad or Android, you also have it on the apps there as well. Now um, for me, it's much more difficult on the, um, the pads, I found it much easier to actually operate this on, on a PC you can use your keys or use your mouse to control all the different um, functions. So I'll just give you a, a quick a look at this. I'm not too bothered whether we have a successful docking or not, just to give you a couple of um, couple of tips on it and to show you what I find it more useful for than the actual game itself. So it's basically again connected to the Draco thruster thing. Um, all these buttons can control your thrusters on the um, on the crew dragon capsule. Um, Tom Cruise, if he's on that, he's going to have to learn these off. So everybody that travels on the Crew Dragon will all be familiar with this. Um, obviously, the pilot will be um, the first person to be using it. Um, and you might not even get to use it. It's actually computer controlled. And uh, they just learn all the, uh, the physical kind of buttons in case of uh, emergency. So there's a few things you have to kind of get sorted. Um, you'll end up floating beside the, um, the space station. Like that's, that's the space station up there. Um, we have lots of buttons here to control our movements. So we've got to get um, first into a position where we can line up the, uh, the Crew Dragon with the, um, with the International Space Station to get the docking mechanism parallel to the front nose of the, uh, the Crew Dragon. So initially they'll be using these buttons over here and they've got to get the roll, the pitch and the yaw all down to within 0.2 of a degree. So they're pretty, um, you wouldn't want me now flying this way in real but um, you, you can kind of attack these one at a time or um, you can do two or three at a time depending on how, um, how efficient you are at these kind of games. So you get the roll um, down to 0.2, you can get it down to 0 0.0 if you want. And this button here is interesting in the middle. This controls the rate of which the thrusters actually um, trust. So uh, I'll just get that back down there. Get the roll one down just to get one of them right in anyway. We've gone too far now. Um, so you can have small movements of the thrusters. All right, so there's zero. So that's, or you can have large kind of thrust. So if you click on that button, you can have large movements of the thruster if you want to do it fast, or small movements depending on the situation. So that's the roll sorted. You get your pitch then, we're a bit low there, so we've got to get the pitch as well up to um, 0.2 degrees. You can do it visually either, but the numbers obviously give you a much more accurate um, picture of where you're at. So in reality, you've got to dock, you know, pretty, pretty accurate with it. So we can get that down to 0.1 there as well. Okay, so that's your pitch. So that's your kind of up and down. If you're in an airplane, that's the nose going up and down. And then the yaw then is the kind of side to side sway. So you've got to get the yaw um, back to point zero as well. So you can see now we're kind of already lining up with the uh, with the space station. Um, again, it's a great interactive tool to get um, people interested in the whole space thing. So with all those figures there, um, less than point two of a degree off. Um, the nose of the capsule of the Crew Dragon is now parallel to the uh, burping mechanism on the space station. So all we got to do then at that stage then is switch to our other controls, which will control kind of transverse axis. So these are the just the up and downs and the, the left and right. And again, you can switch between large movements and small movements. So just go large here to get it down. Again, with any thrusters, when you fire in one direction, it won't just stop, it's in space, it will keep moving. So you've got to fire in the opposite direction to slow it down and to get it um, on target. Now, there are other figures available here. You can see the Z axis, uh, you've got to get that below 0.2 as well. So we're pretty close there. Then there's uh, what's called side reel. So we've got to get that onto target as well. So at this stage, 
there will be no panic on the uh, the capsule. Everything is looking pretty good. We got to get our Z there again. Okay, so if you watch these videos on 900 doing it live, these figures here will often be um, outside of, of the planning two and they will stop a few meters out from the space station like we'll do there in a second. And they'll um, get everything, you know, pretty much lined up. So we need small movements to kind of stop it. Now, so everything's lined up there. All your hexagons are um, in, in good order. All our figures are good. So we can use the acceleration, there are thrusters on the back of the um, Crew Dragon. We can use large thrusts here just to get us in faster. They would approach this pretty slowly because um, obviously they've got to make contact with the um, birth mechanism really, really slowly. So down here on the right, you'll see a closing rate of four point whatever meters per second. And we've got to get that down to about 0 0.01 meters per second to not actually smash it, smash it into the um, space station. So we're obviously going in there pretty quickly compared to normal. So we'll just stop a couple of meters out. So it would be pretty scary in reality now to be approaching at that kind of speed. So I'm trying to get the rate here down into the blue numbers. Elon Musk makes everything very easy in his spacecraft. Okay, so we can see here we're down to seven meters. So we want to slow that right down. So we're going to rest here probably stationary at that. Okay, so we just want to get our figures here at the left end back into order. So we're trying to aim. Obviously in reality, the computer doing this, it would never really be too far off perfect all the way in. Okay, and just get it left a bit. Even with the small trusts here, as you get closer to the birth mechanism, um, you'll see a bigger kind of effect in terms of looking at the space station. It will seem to move um, a lot more. Okay, so we'll speed it up for demonstration purposes here. So we're only four meters out. When we get to two, we'll just back up a bit. Okay, so we've got to get our rate back into the blue here, which we are. So from there then, you're using a lot of thruster motion. Even um, the computer would be firing pretty quickly here to get everything centered. Computers would do it a lot easier than we would. So I'm going way off there. I don't know if we can, we can save that or not. So that was a success, okay? Glad that worked. Okay, so that's, um, that's SpaceX's app for practicing your docking. And um, you can, I'll just show you that there now on the slide. Go on, crash it. Listen, I've crashed it 10 times today already, so we're happy with that. Um, okay, so just pop back then to the, um, to the slideshow there. Again, no, I'm sorry, this is not as slick as uh, it would have been with a couple of weeks practice and all that. Um, so that's your Vortex Cannon. Just capture that again there. Um, this uh, presentation, you'll be able to see uh, um, the address there on, um, on Google for the, uh, for the um, docking simulator. Okay, so that's Tom. He's after spending a week doing his film in there online, and uh, we want to get him safely back to Earth. So the long dock uh, in a similar matter, manner using their thrusters and then the, um, can you still see that there? I hope so. Um, so they'll be ready then for re-entry. So just a few re-entry facts then about Crew Dragon. So it's finally, the orbit burn is about six minutes long when they finally commit to coming back to Earth. So they're firing the thrusters for quite a long time there to, to slow down the velocity. Um, as you know, then the Earth kind of the, the the atmosphere grabs hold of the spacecraft and it starts to heat up and slow down. So, um, like the space shuttle, massive temperatures on the outside, nineteen hundred degrees, and um, the sun is five and a half thousand degrees on the surface. So it's, it's incredible heat, and they're so well designed uh, not to burn up. Obviously, speed for the atmosphere at that stage is seven and a half kilometers per second. 
um, to put that into um, kind of understandable terms. That's Dublin to New York in 11 minutes. So even that's kind of a phenomenal uh, kind of speed um, to be kind of traveling at. And uh, the main parachute's open at 6,000 feet, 120 miles per hour, which is not too fast. Um, as you'll see with the parachutes, I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, they have the advantage of using a, um, a drag chute, which is a small chute that comes out and pulls out the main chute. And um, when you're kind of making parachutes at home for the water rockets and that, you don't have that luxury. So they find it hard to kind of un unravel as well. And uh, splashdown. Um, it is what it is. It is a splashdown and it's quite hard by all accounts. Um, so now, um, in line with kind of recent things with Blue Origin kind of landing back on the Earth and Jeff Bezos is going to be traveling that next month and the whole SpaceX kind of landing on the sea, I was trying to come up with an experiment to kind of demonstrate that. So um, this is a very common one used in, in many schools across the country in science, science classes. Um, so using an egg to kind of experiment with different materials. Um, again, I'm only going to show you a few materials here, but you can, you can try it with lots of different things to try and protect an egg uh, when it falls. So after many, many goes of this, um, we have a kind of a solution here that um, is incredible. We've dropped this from um, the window upstairs onto concrete and the egg survived. You'll see that there in a second. So you just need simple uh, kind of products for this really. Uh, eggs, lots of them, uh, initially anyway. Four Tyler roll holders. Uh, the tubes there out of them. And we need rubber bands, some sponge kitchen pads or scouring pads. Um, obviously, the more kind of soft stuff you get around it, the better. Bubble wrap and uh, marshmallows um, was one of the kids' invention here, but I think that was just to get more sweets. But it seemed to work okay. And for the parachute, then again, bubble wrap, plastic, cord, and uh, sellotape. So, a pretty simple kind of version of that there. So to show you these here on the, uh, the screen. Just share my other camera there now. Just give me one second now to get this loaded up there. Okay, so we should be able to share that now. One second. Oh. Camera doesn't seem to want to share there. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So um, these are kind of the ingredients here that put together. Sponge pads made a huge difference. Um, without those, we were getting a few breakages. You want to try and wrap the egg up as well. And um, let's say more than half the times it was dropped without bubble wrap on it, uh, the egg did smash. So obviously wrapping it closely is a, a big factor in make, making it succeed. Other than that, you just strap four uh, tubes together and uh, fill up the tubes. We tried it without filling up the tubes and the egg smashed most of the time. Sometimes they got away with it. So we just stuffed in uh, bubble wrap. You can put paper in there as well or uh, marshmallows. Kids are ready to come up with these things. So just part them and put the egg in between. Push the egg from the end, you won't get much breakage on it. Okay, so that looks like it could take a lot of abuse. But just to finish it off, then we strap on um, a couple of Brillo or soap pads on the ends as well. Okay, so I was trying to relate this to returning capsules um, for the kids. So next month, with Jeff Bezos launching on Blue Origin, they won't be landing on water. So um, the bottom of the Blue Origin. Um, uh, capsule has all kind of crumpled zones built into the seats and into the floor. Also has those retro fire rockets as well. So before it hits the ground, the rockets will fire and actually slow the ascent. But it's still going to take a bit of a thump, and uh, a lot of the the forces in the compression will be taken by the kind of honeycomb structure in the bottom of of that capsule. So uh, we threw that out the window a few times upstairs. Absolutely no problem. Uh, we then decided to take some parachutes to it. 
So we've been struggling with the design of parachutes. Um, we made a small one here, which is about the size of a dinner plate, and um, just made a kind of an octagon shape out of it, eight sides. All you got to do is tape on your um, eight strings here. You can use fishing wire if you have that as well. And basically, we strap that on to the to the um, to the egg, as you'll see in a minute. So obviously, the small shoot didn't do a great job. We had a bigger shoot made then. This is actually the shoot that we were making for the actual um, water rocket, but we didn't get time to try it out yet. So this is much bigger with the size of the dustbin lid. And um, you'll see the effect that had there in a second. I'm going to show you the video. And we're nearly there then. So I'll just get up the video there and out for you of the... Um, of the eggs getting tortured. So the first video I'm going to have here is the egg with the small shoot on it. And this one was um, a bit of a failure. I think this video here, don't worry, I know you can't see it. We'll get it working for you there now, one second. One second, I'll get that working there. Don't seem to be getting that video up there. Definitely practice this more when I uh, get away from. For some reason, I'll get that hard to uh, share that one. Oh, we have it there now. Okay. So uh, this one is just basically dropping uh, the eggs again. I haven't had time to rotate it the other way, so you might have to turn sideways. This is just the um, small parachute with the eggs in it, just to demonstrate um, the capsule coming back to Earth. You should be able to see this now just dropping from the window. Don't know if this is going to fail or what. Yeah, so that was our classic failure one. Uh, it's always more fun when it does fail sometimes. So we strapped on then the bigger shoot and got a little bit of a better result. Can you see that there now? Yeah. Yeah. So that one, um, you know, obviously if it was coming down from a greater height, um, would probably um, float down much nicer, but it did, it did open up and catch a little bit of the wind there. So that's probably more in line with what um, the, the Blue Origin uh, capsule is going to do when it's actually um, landing. Okay, so pretty much at the end there, that would be the end of Tom's uh, journey. I just resume sharing the PowerPoint here. So that is pretty much it. That's all my slides on that. Yeah, so um, there's only one man happier than me at the moment. That's Tom Cruise, who's got back to Earth nice and safely. <laughs> I'm just kind of hoping the overall effect there, really, of that is there's some experiments and some fun things there you can do with friends and family. As I say, anyone that I've seen um, looking at the water rocket in particular taking off, you know, it's a bit like when you see Saturn in the telescope the first time, there's that, that wow factor, and, and you get that gasp of excitement from you. So that's one that's really easy to do, and I hope you, have, you can have fun with um, let's say we're going to move on to try and develop them to get them higher and faster and hopefully move into um, actual launching real rockets. I'm sure some of you have seen them with the little motors, um, maybe at the end of the year, that kind of thing. 
So thanks everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed that and got some ideas out of it. Hope it wasn't too long and uh, have fun with it. Yeah, no, it was perfect, Dermot. So it was a uh, bit forward to actually yeah. putting it up on the YouTube page because, like, you know, the few experiments that you had there as well. Um, yeah. It'd be so easy for anyone to follow it and that, you know, mm. and test it out themselves and that, you know, especially with the parachutes and that as well. It, was, it looked like a bit of crack. Look, they're, they're very simple. And the thing about them is, like, they're, they're all from kind of stuff you have hanging around the house. And even if you happen to stuff I have there, you might have like everyone has different types of stuff you can use for parachutes for the rocket um you know there's just a couple of key things you need like the 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 friend to pump up the the water rocket but other than that the design of the fins is completely up to yourself the design of the nose cone uh, what bottle you use um what you use for protecting the egg it doesn't really matter you know everyone can make every one of those experiments work and uh you know, it gets people interested and, and, and that's really kind of the goal of it as well. And if that works, I'd be happy enough, you know. Have you any questions at all now? I mean, I'm